Great to have you along for the ride. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Really glad to have this young lady back. Her name is Alana Nash. She is an author, and we've had her on several times now. Alana, how are you? Good to see you again. I'm so glad to see you again, but it sure is a sad occasion, Joe. It really is. You know, uh, I'm 56, so a couple of years older than Lisa Marie was. And I remember her just about my entire life, obviously. And I think at one point when I was eight or nine years old, I thought that I'd probably marry her at some at some point. I think a lot of little boys that were my age felt that same way, who idolized her dad. But what a life. Um, uh, first of all, stunned that she's gone so so fast. A couple of days earlier, she was at the Golden Globes. Didn't look well there. Was no. there any illness that you knew of that she was dealing with, or was this as sudden for you? It was very sudden in the sense that we hadn't been told that anything was going on with her. But certainly she had not looked well for, for quite a while. She looked uh, she looked particularly unwell at the Golden Globes and, and maybe not particularly well at Graceland uh, that weekend. So right. um, maybe there were warning signs that we just didn't see, although I think a lot of people thought that she would not have a long life. I, I thought that as well. I had been worried about her from the time she was nine, honestly, when she saw her father dead on the floor. I thought, oh, wow, this just sets her up for so many psychological problems. And there's a family history there, too, of dying young, to be honest. It's Alana Nash. Get get her book. It's called Baby, Let's Play House, Elvis Presley and the Women Who Loved Him. And I want to get into that in a, in a moment. But um, you just bring up a, a lot of good points. Her grandmother died at 46, uh, Gladys. Uh, her father died at 42. Uh, I think Vernon lived a good long life. But, but other than that, I mean, there had been tragedy. Elvis's twin brother was stillborn. So um, historically, that family doesn't live very long. Well, yes, uh, Vernon died at 63 of heart trouble, and we're told that Lisa Marie had a cardiac event. Right. We don't know what fueled that. She was very open about addiction all of her life from teenage years on. We just don't know. But on the Smith side of the family, Elvis's mother's side, there's a long history of premature death or, or recklessness or just not sticking around for very long and, and dying tragically. I'm surprised Vernon was 63. Boy, I thought he was a lot older than that. That's crazy. Um, so, I mean, that's not very old at all either. So, so Lisa Marie, her life was was one that would be abnormal her entire life. As you said, at nine years old, she's got a happy life. Uh, she knows, starting to know who Elvis is and these pictures that you see of them just loving on each other with, with Priscilla and everything uh, just really make you weep when you look at them. But at nine years old, like you said, she, she saw him dead on the floor. What happened to my dad? Right. Um, and, right. and, and that had to stick with her entire life. Then she has the, either the fortune or misfortune of looking almost exactly like the guy uh, yeah. her entire life. So the expectation of her, Alana, had to be uh, 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 off the charts. They expected she would yeah. sing, dance, perform, be her dad, and she never really could be an individual, could she? Well, you know, she was very brave to try to step outside of his shadow and, and assert her own personality and her own talents and say, hey, this is me. I'm different from my dad, even though I look exactly like him. Almost, you know, when you would speak with her, and I was lucky enough to do that, uh, you, you just couldn't take your eyes off her, yeah. uh, either uh, t speaking with her or seeing her in performance because she looked so much like him. But she always seemed jumpy and jittery in her own skin, particularly in concert. She just looked like she was going to fall apart. She was so nervous. My right. heart really went out to her. But gosh, you know, the ground just kept shaking for her. her. Her parents divorced when she was five, separated before that, of course, four marriages that didn't work, uh, lots of instability in her life and shuffling as a small child between Los Angeles and her mother's strict household in Memphis and her father's very lenient, uh, indulgent household. Uh, it was very hard for her to find, a, you know, a path of reality, which she was able to do through her children. I think, you know, she was a fierce mother, loved being a mother. Yeah. Uh, uh, Riley uh, is a famous now actress. Uh, I'm, uh, her two younger children aren't doing anything yet, but but again, they're, they're probably too young. Of course, she lost Benjamin very recently, yeah. who again looked just like Elvis. And I think the pressure on him was about the same as it was on her, although he took it differently and sadly uh, took his own life. But here's a guy who looked just like Elvis and was into music. And when asked, what kind of music will you do? His response was a very curt, nothing like Elvis. Do you think there was pressure in that family, either be like him or be nothing like him? Oh, gosh. You know, I mean, the significance of, of being Elvis Presley's child or, or grandchild, yeah. the weight of it was enormous, enormous. First of all, there's no privacy. There's no real way to work out your identity and figure out who you are without the spotlight being on you at all times. Right, right. It's such an abnormal reality 
that people are bound to react in ways that uh, take them outside the bounds of reality in one, in one way or another, or numbing out, or trying to, it's, it's, I look at Lisa Marie as someone who had, even though she had a fabulous sense of humor, oh, she was hilariously funny, but a kind of black humor, sarcastic way, right, right. Um, it's just, it's just insurmountable pain, it's unsuitable pain that they cannot escape. Uh, except for short periods of time. And, uh, you know, we do this to them. Um, we do this to them because we can't get enough of, of them because we love them, but it kills them. It kills them. Well, well uh, do, do we love them or do we do we love the idea of them? I get the feeling, Alana, and I think you agree, yeah. that the expectation yeah. is be Elvis now. The expectation is be yeah. Elvis's kid. You must be just like him. And Lisa Marie had her own personality, as you said, yeah. uh, but, but fortunately or unfortunately, she's a beautiful lady. She looked just yeah. like him. Uh, Benjamin yeah. looked just like him. So the expectation before anything comes out of their mouth is be him now. Which was impossible. Yeah. And a terrible thing to lay on anybody, to be to be anybody than who you are. So who was she? I mean, I, I never got a chance to talk to her. You know that I know Priscilla, and I've interviewed yeah. her, and I've done a show with her, and, and she's very, very smart, yet very, very yeah. quiet, and much yeah. smaller than you would expect. She's maybe 5'2". Yeah. Um, so... Uh, 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 right, mm -hmm. so you had bigger than life Elvis at six feet tall and 175, 200 pounds, whatever he happened to be in, in when he was performing. But also, the, just the the vision of him was bigger than all of that to to smaller people, stature wise, and people who didn't want such a spotlight. Yes, Priscilla did some acting. Yes, she's very funny. We saw in the Naked Gun movies. But at the same time, she would never have done what Elvis did, just like Lisa Marie couldn't, just like Benjamin couldn't. So. Do you try to stack yourself up to that? Like when you went into the meeting with with a conversation with Lisa Marie, if you don't mind, set the stage. How does that meeting even happen? And tell me, did you have expectations or did you purposely leave those aside and and learn who she was? Yeah, I, I met her, but after a show, I, my interview with her was on the phone. And it was in 2012. It was about her album, Storm and Grace. Right. So I was very careful. I wanted to concentrate only on asking her about her music and what was behind the music that she made. I did not ask her one single question about her dad because I wanted her to feel that she was being valued and appreciated for her art and for herself. And, you know, she was very, very present in an interview. She really, even though in person, she had this very mask-like appearance in which she didn't smile very much. In there wasn't a lot of emotion, you're right. No. So, and so she didn't look very approachable in person, although she was always kind, but she gave off a kind of vibe like, don't get too close to me. But when you did, you know, she welcomed it, uh, a shyness there. But in, in, in an interview situation, she couldn't stop talking. I mean, she, she really was present there for you, and she wanted to make a real connection with you and make sure that you understood what she was about, and she was interested in you. And so... Um, She's a real person. You know, we forget that these people who, who are rock and roll royalty, uh, who seem bigger than life, and of course she was bigger than life when she landed on this earth as an infant, yes. we forget these are real people with real vulnerabilities and uh, needs and, and desires apart from their, their famous uh, of, uh, parents. Well, I mean, she was the most famous baby on the planet when she was born. Yeah. And, and I'm sure that that weighed on her because she found that out sooner than later. It's Alana Nash. Get her book. It's called Baby Let's Play House. Elvis Presley and the Women Who Loved Him. Uh, in the conversation with her, by the way, very, very smart that you didn't bring him up. And I don't think I would have either because you do want to know who she is. Does she end up bringing him up? No, she didn't. Really? Uh, she didn't. Uh, That's interesting. But yeah, I, I've watched a, a number of interviews with her s since her death, which just demolished me, by the way. It hit me in a way, it, 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 it hit me much, much harder than I would have thought it did. I mean, it really it has kind of taken over my life this, since she died. I'm right. just coming out of it now. I'm deeply, deeply saddened. Um, but she she wanted to, I, I went to these interviews, and when people would ask her, say when she went on The View, where she, she did smile and she did engage, she couldn't come out of herself to talk about her dad. But you could tell that when she really connected with you in a deep way, it was not about her dad. And that's what I wanted to give her. I wanted to give her an appreciation of Lisa Marie Presley apart from anything else. You know? Well, I love that. I would love to I'd love to see her hear that interview at some point. Um, it's Alana Nash. Get, get her book. It's called Baby Let's Play House, Elvis Presley and the Women Who Loved Him. Are we talking about his mother, Priscilla, Lisa Marie? Are we talking about his co-stars, Anne Margaret and the others? Who are we talking about in the book? 
That book was the total female presence in his life. I, it, I wrote it because I, I saw how female-oriented he was. Yeah. We think of him as always being surrounded by the Memphis Mafia. But really, it was, it was the, the company of women that he wanted. And I don't just mean in a girlfriend way. I mean, even when he was a small child, he liked to babysit. He liked the company of women. He liked to talk to younger people, even as a boy. Uh, and it was always from women that he drew his strength. And I thought that was a fascinating thing. And there were women who taught him various aspects of his art and his act. And I wanted to explore those influences on him as well. So it's a, a total look at all of the femaleness in his life and how he responded to that. And what was his reaction and his treatment of women? Was that relative to his love for his mother? I mean, obviously, Gladys was the most important person who ever yeah. lived to him, and she died very young. And yeah. very sad that he was overseas. You know, uh, when she got very sick, he came back uh, right before her death. But I mean, that relationship seemed to to mold how he treated people then on out. Well, he had a complicated uh, sense of, of male femaleness. And in his relationships, he divided women to, into separate categories, actually. Uh, and that, a, a, lar a large part of the book uh, takes up that discussion. Fascinating. Although she was only nine when he died, um, what was the relationship between Lisa Marie and Elvis? We, we saw the pictures. We, it seems to be unbelievable. It was amazing. Um, but it could not have been very much more than what we saw in the pictures because he was touring at the time. Um, or finishing up movies, starting his tours again, playing two shows in Las Vegas seven days a week. What right. could the relationship have been? Well, you know, she was very honest about talking about it. he would he would sleep all day, of course, and then she had the run of Graceland and and had the golf cart with the holy terror right. on the golf cart <laughs> running around, and right. she would go down to the gates and sign autographs and sometimes write <laughs> kind of rude things <laughs> for her name. Uh, even then, even at eight, when she was doing that, I think she was conflicted about fame, wanting wanting to speak to the fans, but but angry that they took her dad away, right. and the fans took him away. So he was very indulgent as a father. We all know the stories of how he would fly her uh, on an, in an airplane to see snow or or to buy yeah. her a sort of food, and uh, you know he gave her a, a fake fur bed, a round bed with a mirror on top of it, and he did anything she wanted, she got he. Uh, but there were times he didn't really have uh, time for her. And uh, I remember Billy Smith, his cousin, telling me the story and how then she would act out in ways to get his attention. So she was a typical little girl in a lot of ways. But, e but even in her own uh, words, she was a terror as a child, especially going from, as I said, the super strict household of her mother in Los right. Angeles to the super lenient household of her dad. So, in Memphis. so um, lots of different things to sort out, even as a kid. It is uh, Alana Nash. Get her book. It's called Baby Let's Play House, Elvis Presley and the Women Who Loved Him, available on Amazon and, and other books as well. Go to ColonelParker.net if you'd like to find out more about her. Um, I, I've got to ask you, and, and I know that you and I are both fans. You're, you're a great journalist in how you've covered Elvis and his life. But I want to ask you, what, we as humans don't want those we love to leave. And right. when Elvis died... There was the there was several people saying, well, he's John Burroughs, he's flipping burgers in in uh, Kalamazoo at the Burger King. He's uh, staying at a hotel under the name John Burroughs, which he did use when he was uh, uh, alive and going to hotels to to be uh, anonymous when he went places. Was there a time that you thought that he didn't die? There was a woman named Gail Brewer Giorgio that wow. wrote that wrote a book about uh, Orion Eckerly Darnell. Uh, and again, this is getting in the, into the weeds for my audience, but I'm such a geek about all this stuff. I actually bought her book. I listened to the audio tape 20, 30 years ago. And she made a pretty good case that maybe he didn't die. Was there a moment that you thought that he that he did fake his death to get away from it all? Well, she interviewed me, as a matter of fact. Did she? I was not really happy with the way she portrayed me in the book, but um, she got it a little a little bit twisted. But uh, I was one of the first journalists to be able to to be allowed in to view uh, Elvis uh, when they had their coffin in the foyer. Right. Uh, so they'd already had the private uh, gathering, but that uh, Dick Grove came out and address the members of the press who wish to view Mr. Presley, as he put it. And we were first in, my colleague from the Career Journal in Louisville, where I live, uh, was writing for the paper at the time. And uh, you could get pretty close, but you couldn't stop. Right. So when I came out, people said, well, what does he look like? And I said, well, you know, it, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, honestly, Joe, I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know if I thought he was going to be in a jumpsuit. I mean, I don't know what I thought he was going to be <laughs> He had on a white dress suit, yeah. which Vernon had given him for Christmas, a, a light blue dress shirt and a long silver tie. And he looked very waxy. 
And I at first I thought, gosh, is is this Elvis, or is this maybe a Colonel Parker joke or hoax? And, yeah. and is, is it, you know? And so I sneak back in to look at him again, and I was even more confused when I came out. And I tried to go through again, and they, I got yanked out. The guy said, "No, oh, you've already been through twice." Right. Uh, but now I know why he looks so waxy, and uh, I'm totally convinced that Elvis died uh, all those years ago when we were told. Well, I mean, we didn't want him to, and I think that's why we held up hope. I, I, I don't believe he's alive today. I'm not saying that he is. Yeah. But but the inquirer said was, the coffin was 900 pounds, and there was an air conditioning unit because it was wax and everything else. So who knows if what they were displaying was true. I do, though, believe that he died. I mean, what you hear about, about the cause of death now and some injury in 1967 that harmed his autoimmune system there's all sorts of speculation but i would have to believe and i I knew that he died when she got married to to danny keogh when lisa marie did because i think daddy would have been there i think he would have shown up in some form or fashion we would have seen him um uh, thank you for going down the rabbit hole with me there because that that, that's always uh, been a wonderment for me and being that we're both sort of the same mindset when it comes to elvis i wanted to ask it's alana nash one last question if you don't mind what what happens with riley now and the reason i ask is she's the heir She's the she, she's the eldest uh, child. She's the one who gets all of this now. So does the weight of the Elvis legacy fall in her lap now? Well, the daughters, all the daughters uh, in here. Well, she's the eldest, so I would figure that she would maybe be the manager of it until yes. they're of age. Yes, and we're told that they will keep it as it was, and uh, things will carry on. But you know, it can't be as it was because as long as Lisa, who looked so much like him, as we said, was walking the earth among us. Uh, his DNA was still here, and, yes. and a part of him was still here, and now she's gone. And I just hope that Priscilla is going to be able to carry on. I worry about her now. What a shock, of course, losing not only your child but your only child, yeah. and uh, in such a sudden way. Very, it's a very, very lamentable, sad situation, and people all over the world are feeling it and still grieving. And 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 I among them. Uh, I am as well, and I appreciate you giving us some time today. It's Alana Nash. Get the book, Baby, Let's Play House, Elvis Presley and the Women Who Loved Him. It's available on Amazon. Alana, let's talk again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I enjoy you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. We're, we're back after this. Stay right here.